Hey, this is Ethan, the Easy Coach. I'm starting up the first ever test stream for my friends and family. I appreciate it if any of you are there. We'll actually start a little bit after six, but we want to turn the stream on so you could all know I was actually here. So, um, the idea tonight, which I'll end up repeating a couple times because we're starting early, is uh, you're helping me test a stream I want to do to start uh, sharing what I've learned in my 25 year career with people who can benefit from it. And so with that in mind, what I was gonna talk about tonight, because at least at Amazon and at Twitch, it's review season, is how to get the most out of your performance review and other feedback situations. But what I wanna do right now is since it's not quite six o'clock, I'm just literally filling time because we haven't built a fancy starting soon countdown timer. We will probably do that. Meanwhile, I do wanna point out the elegant brick wall behind me. It's excellent green screen technology. It gives my friend Dave the power to put all kinds of things behind me that I can't see. That sounds entertaining. So with that in mind though, uh, as people come in, you can do me a favor. I have a screen here where I can see the chat room. Just drop in and say hello, and that way I know there's actually somebody there to start talking to. Otherwise, turns out I'm actually standing in a basement studio looking at a camera on top of a stepladder. Uh, works pretty well, though. Pretty happy with it. <clears throat> Bueller. Bueller. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I said 6 p.m. Don't be late, but don't be early. <sighs> well, the stream is live. We're definitely up. Good. Well, it's 5.59. Yeah, so this is the challenge with uh, short streams, right? And this is one of the main things we'll have to fight to overcome. Is how do you kill time at the beginning till people show up? Somebody showed up. All right. Is it you? It's not you. Nobody here yet. No, it's not showing up there. <laughs> yeah, we don't have a like viewer count up here. Yeah. You're going to try and. I wouldn't try and. Well, I'm you can choose. To... Uh oh. Nope. Well, I'll fix that, but it's. 40 Pink Dragons is here. Oh, hey, hey, Audrey. <laughs> 40 Pink Dragons, Audrey. Yeah, so we shouldn't reveal that. Oh, wait, we just did. Yes. Anyway, um, <clears throat> we're getting ready to broadcast. Uh, for whatever reason, the chat isn't reflecting up here, but we know that works because we've done it before. Yeah, I know why. Because <laughs> it's set to your chat? That's right. Ah, so I'm looking at Dave's chat, which says <laughs> nothing because Dave's not broadcasting. Meanwhile, Dave's hosting an advertisement of something. Yeah, I think that's actually yours now. Oh, well. It's because people dropping in to stream? Uh, yes, and you've got six viewers right now. All right, well, I've got six people. We're almost there. All right, so for those of you who just got here, thank you for showing up. Dave's fixing one thing for me real quick, and we'll get started. Specifically, there's a monitor here in front of me where I can see what you say in chat, but right now it's looking at Dave's chat for his channel. So we're gonna switch it to my channel and I'll jump right in. But I appreciate you all coming and helping me test this uh, so that we can figure out if we have our technology right. Currently, it's very small. All right, cheer now to become number one. Oh, I have a cheer leaderboard. Don't do that right now. Feel free to, but I don't need it. All right, we're getting bigger, bigger. A oh, little big, back one. That seems good. <clears throat> okay. So Dave tells me at least six of you are there and I get a hi. I actually don't know who an elfin plate is, so welcome. Uh, and you don't have to tell me, that's not the point. But there's at least six of you watching and more coming. We're doing a small audience tonight. Um, and so let me explain. I have this vision I've been developing with Dave and some others to start sharing what I know about coaching and career development from my career uh, with others. And I need a test audience for that, and you guys are that. So one of the things, my head is cut off. Hmm, that's true, Dave. I was noticing that. You look fine I don't know. I look fine there. I'm going to scroll up. 
Uh, so I appreciate the feedback, by the way, from someone saying, uh, giving me some data on <clears throat> how we look. Anybody in chat that has problems, we've had problems with audio sync. Um, <clears throat> uh, we've had some problems with audio sync. If we have more of those problems, uh, just let us know. So if it looks like when I count one, two, three, that we're doing old Japanese movie dubbing and it sounds very different, he says we're good now. All right, great. All right fantastic. So I'm gonna jump right into this. So the idea is I wanna build a community with the help of you, my friends, and others uh, to help the world do better in their careers with less stress and effort. So I went through a lot of stress and effort. If I can share my ideas, that's great. So uh, if I can share and build a community that helps other people avoid some of the pain I've gone through, fantastic, and we can learn from each other. Now, in the future, we'll actually have some great Twitch technology called an extension that will let you vote on what questions you'd like me to answer. But for tonight, hey, Phyllis, uh, you'll have to actually write your questions into chat. So the topic is performance reviews and feedback. I'm going to talk about those for a minute, and then I'll start answering any questions that come in. Um, we have some people who like the brick wall background. Yes, it's very elegant. We can change it to anything we like over time. Do you still have the lake scene? Yeah, you want to All right, let's go to the lake. We'll see if that works out. Or if he trips over a power cord, we'll be offline. In any case, um, performance reviews. So performance reviews are super important because it's your annual chance usually, some companies more, to get actual feedback on what you're doing. And those are conversations that all of us tend to avoid if we're worried about feedback or that we just don't get around to or that we don't communicate clearly. So I was thinking earlier today about performance reviews and what I concluded was in a performance review, you really want to get to clarity. If it's good feedback or no feedback, you want to know what are you doing well that you can do more of. If it's bad feedback where someone's trying to communicate a problem to you, you actually want to get to clarity on what exactly is the issue and can you get some examples to work with. Um, <clears throat> and if you... Uh, if it's unclear, you're really trying to get to clarity. Now, uh, my good friend Stedman's come in. He's asked the first actual question. He says he'd love to hear more about me and what's my story, which is a good prompt. In general, I should probably introduce every stream that way. Stedman, I'll share that since everyone invited tonight are people who know me well, I skipped that, but it's an excellent prompt I'll remember. So a little bit about me. I'm Ethan Evans. We picked the handle the Easy Coach after my initials, Ethan Zane, and also after the idea that we'd like this to make people's lives easier as well as better. My history is I worked for 12 years in different entrepreneurial startups, always in small companies, and many of those as a leader. And then 14 years ago, I joined Amazon and I've spent 14 years in the growing Amazon hierarchy, managing at different times up to 800 employees. And so I've lot of, had a lot of chance to get feedback and get performance reviews, and also to give feedback and give performance reviews. And what I wanna to do tonight is practice sharing some of that while we work out the technology kinks. So at this point from my audience, I need somebody in chat to give me a topic. Otherwise, in that space. Otherwise, I can just keep talking about my own opinions, but what's more fun is if you ask me a question I can respond to about how to handle a feedback situation you've been in, either giving feedback or receiving feedback. And so that's one way to do it. Now, a good question I heard recently because I gave this talk internally to Twitch earlier this week, was what do you do if your manager changes? In a big company, reorganizations between formal performance reviews are pretty common. So I had someone in the room with me ask, and I asked just how many, you know, 
when did your manager change? And I shared that I knew of a situation where someone had had a manager change at least six times and it turned in a year. And it turned out this employee I was speaking to said, yeah, that's me too. I'm on my sixth manager this year. So how on earth do you get a good annual performance review when you've had several managers? And one of the things I shared is there's actually some data that shows that having multiple managers can really change your um, performance review and unfortunately not for the better. People basically don't know you well, they lose context, they're not sure what you've done. This is all my speculation is why it happens. But you tend not to do as well as someone who has a manager who's known them for a whole year and can say uh, with confidence that you've done a great job. And so on average, having multiple managers will lower your performance review. So that's bad. What can you do about it? Well, like a lot of the answers I'll give to a lot of questions, it puts more responsibility on you. There are ways to address things in any performance situation, but it usually means more work for you if no one else is gonna do it. And since it's your performance that's being evaluated, you really kinda of wanna put in that effort and understand you have primary responsibility to make sure your performance review reflects what you've done. Because it's great in a sense to think, well, your manager or your company should do that for you, but I wouldn't typically trust in that process because it's not my best interest. So <clears throat> I thank you. I see a couple of you have put in questions. I'll jump on those in a second. Just finishing this topic up as an example though, what I advise if you've had multiple managers is first, if some of those managers are still around, try and get feedback from them put into the process. If you know your manager is leaving or quitting, try to get them to write something down. If that hasn't happened, most companies now use something called a 360 degree feedback where you get feedback from peers. So in that case, I would try to make sure that your current manager, your last manager, reaches out to peers or that you prompt peers to put things in so that you hear more from those peers um, so that that context from peers is part of your evaluation because it can give support to the idea that you've done well. The third thing I recommend is talk to your manager about this problem. Talk to them about the fact, hey, you've only known me a couple months, but that unfortunately really isn't my problem. I need you to try and look past that when you evaluate my performance and I need to ask you to do a little bit of extra diligence on my behalf. While maybe not every manager will do that, some will. So with that, uh, I'll go ahead and take uh, High Fist Dujek. I hope I got your name right. Hey, Ethan, how do you think about someone's performance in conjunction with what motivates them? This is an awesome question. Thank you. So performance and motivation are pretty clearly tied together. Um, if you're doing work you don't really like or that doesn't motivate you, we're now relying on your professionalism. You're relying on it and I'm relying on it, which is basically I don't like this work, I don't find it satisfying, but I wanna be a good employee and so I'm gonna do my best to get through it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, with that in mind, um, you can probably only do that for so long and so that's a good thing to share with your management. Now, one of the challenges there is if you're in a job where that's gonna be a big part of the job, you now have a mismatch between the job and the motivation. So, I strongly believe that highly motivated employees are gonna perform the best. Basically, not going on about it at a huge length, it's this idea of um, performance is voluntary. We don't live in a society where we can extract performance from someone and that's never been possible in uh, intellectual or, or knowledge work. People have to do it voluntarily. So we can call it discretionary effort. 
And if people don't want to give discretionary effort, they're generally going to do less of a good job. Meanwhile, if you're excited about something, they're going to do more of a good job. So aligning performance with motivation is super important. Um, for you as an employee, because we're talking about how to get the most out of your performance review as opposed to what I should do as a manager, a lot of that is communicating about what motivates you. Because all other things being equal, I'd like to give you um, really good feedback uh, and I'd like to give you work that you will enjoy, but I may not know what you enjoy. And most managers, myself included, tend to project our own experiences. Now, Stedman's prompting, um, what about the situation behavior impact model? Um, can I ask for specific feedback using this kind of model? I'm not sure if that comment is related to what I was just addressing. I kind of took it that way. Absolutely. You can use situation behavior impact, which is the idea of tell me what the situation was, tell me what my behavior was, tell me what impact that had. That's a great way to give feedback to someone. Can you ask for specifics? You can both ask, can you give me an example? Tell me when and where you saw this thing that you either think is good performance or think is poor performance. Or, um, you can say, well, where did I, where did you see that behavior? But I absolutely think asking for examples is very critical. So, <clears throat> all right, sweet. And now we have people uh, starting to add their, starting to add emotes, which is great. So uh, next question here, I don't know if I specifically fully addressed the motivation question, but it's a good one. Is it better to give feedback for someone whose work you don't know well or better to decline the request? I'll be honest, I decline those. If I can't say something with confidence, I'm afraid I'll do more damage than if I give kind of lightweight feedback based on only one or two examples. Um, <clears throat> and so if I only give things with one or two examples uh, or even less, I may not... Um, get them the right information uh, and I may hurt them. So if I don't know enough to give a really good comment, I tend not to give any comment at all. Uh, and I'll explain to their manager, explain to who's asking if offered why I'm not doing it, which is I simply don't know enough to do well. The other thing I think you can do is you can frame your feedback to the limited exposure you actually have. And what I mean by that is if you have a situation where you've only been exposed to, say, my work on one project, be very clear and say, hey, I only worked with this person in this one project and um, <clears throat> I wanted to just give feedback based on their one project, but not on everything. Uh, I don't know how they've done elsewhere. And so in that case, I tend to offer positives I've seen and I try to avoid offering negatives or at least frame them and say, in this one instance, I only saw this one thing. So this answer, like many of the answers, will be a little bit, it depends. But generally, if I'm not real clear with valuable feedback, I decline. Um, at the same time, if I have something to offer, I'm just specific about what it is and how much it applies. So some of the questions may scroll off the screen I have here. That's a limitation of how we're doing things tonight. But I can always get back to them. And starting next week, we'll have different technology. But in one madman asks, any thought on what is more effective? And it just went off the screen. So what's the rest of it, Dave? Any thought about what's... Let's just read it here. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Any thoughts on what is more effective, open and often informal discussions or more formalized scheduled meetings? Great, you can scroll back up. Thank you. I'm my, my lovely and capable assistant, Dave Marklet. All right, so that's a great question. Almost every um, piece of thought on this says informal and more frequent is way better. What we know about formal feedback sessions is first, they ramp up the pressure and expectation. So everyone's nervous, everyone's tense. Oh my God, I'm gonna be rated and that's gonna control my raise and this is my review and it's written down. 
And when people are scared, they stop listening. They stop hearing, they stop speaking, and it becomes, how do we get through this all in one piece? Um, so instead, uh, informal is way, informal and frequent is better for a number of reasons. A second reason it tends to be better is uh, we know that when people um, wait a long time between performance reviews, that your 12-month performance review turns out to be what I remember from your last couple of months. And so what you did, let's say the performance review is now, what you did last March probably has been largely forgotten. Even though that's bad and unfair, it's true. So if we're having conversations along the way, um, it's better. Uh, and there's just a long list of reasons informal is better. So I answered the question, is informal and frequent better? Absolutely. Yet another reason it's better is the faster you do reviews, the more likely I can give what Stedman prompted about, which is um, uh, situation behavior impact. I'm close to the situation. And I, so I can say yesterday or last week in our meeting, you interrupted Amanda several times I saw Amanda appear to be upset, and after that meeting, she said you, uh, that Fred doesn't listen to me. So Fred, the situation was last week with Amanda, and the behavior was you interrupted her in the meeting. The point is I can be very specific. That's, of course, revealing who people are, but the point is I can be really specific. All right, so frequent way better. And making this into useful advice you can get frequent feedback by asking for it in your one-on-ones or other times. All right. So Julie Parrish 6 asks, to whom and how far within an organization do you think gaining performance feedback is productive versus counterproductive? Um, that's a great question. I honestly don't think I have a fantastic answer to off the top of my head. So if someone else who's watching thinks they have a good answer, they can absolutely offer it in chat. My perspective is really, it's gotta be people who know you reasonably well. Um, there's probably two types of feedback. Like if you want feedback simply to verify that you worked with this other team and like in my self review, I'm writing, I have a great relationship with legal, then you might want some lawyer to write good things about you so that that seems validated. But generally, if you want insight, you need people who've worked with you enough to have a more holistic picture of you. So I don't tend to go far and wide in an organization. And I generally think trying to get meaningful performance feedback from someone far away from you in an organization is pretty hard. And so I don't tend to go far and wide. Now, Julie has asked, is it counterproductive? I think it's only counterproductive when people start declining to the previous question. If you sort of prompt or put into your system or tell your boss or any of these number of ways to try and get feedback from far away and they all decline and say, well, I don't actually know Julie that well, or we only work together in this one meeting, that actually I think makes you look worse because now, at least in our system, when I decline feedback, it gets written back in why I declined it. And even if I'm truly honest where I say, hey, I didn't work with Amanda very much this year, that doesn't tend to help you. So I'd ask feedback of people close enough to give real comments. So Stedman asks, uh, you work for Amazon. What's it like in terms of feedback and performance? Have you received challenging feedback personally? Curious, what's it like to hear feedback from people like Jeff? So generally I won't choose to answer questions deeply about Amazon practices or policies, but I am happy to share my own experiences. So I'm gonna skip the first part of the question and not really talk about Amazon's feedback culture too much, but I'm super happy to talk about receiving challenging feedback personally, and I can share a little bit of fun uh, stuff, I think, about what it's like to hear from Jeff Bezos. So, um, <clears throat> Have I received challenging feedback personally? Many times. Um, and constantly and ongoing, actually. Uh, and I don't consider that bad. Um, 
because feedback is the tool that lets me improve myself. So um, I recently uh, had a 360 review, uh, pointed out some of my challenges. Um, I tend to be very eager in conversation to jump in. Um, <clears throat> and I really like to uh, put my ideas in and I'm very excited about it, but that can lead to me interrupting people and it can lead to me not hearing more quiet people or the, even them feeling uh, not heard, run over, etc. So one example where I received challenging feedback just going back a few months ago is my ongoing journey to try and be a better listener, which is frankly not a strength. Um, <clears throat> so that's one uh, example of challenging feedback I've received personally. Um, it would be a long list to go through them all, but I will share uh, what it's like to, fear, to hear feedback uh, from folks like Jeff. So a story I've told many times in other settings is uh, a few years ago, I was launching something that uh, at Amazon in my job that Jeff Bezos was aware of. And that feature was going to have what we used to call a Jeff letter. So a Jeff letter is where on the homepage of Amazon, we used to take over all the space that advertises products and instead have a letter, just a white background um, that was usually titled Dear Customers and where Jeff explained how a new feature or new product was coming out to customers and kind of his own personal take on it. And then it was signed Jeff. Well, this feature I built um, was going to have a Jeff letter. And we had gone through the whole process to write the letter with him and get it in his wording. And we had it all ready to go. And then my team started launching the product. Well, long story short, we worked all night. In the morning came, it wasn't working. I can go into more why in a minute. But Jeff woke up and it was 6 a.m. I'd been up all night. He gets up pretty early. And I got a note from him and said, hey, where's the Jeff letter? Because since the feature wasn't working, we hadn't put the letter explaining it live on Amazon's homepage. And at least back then, it appears it's the first thing he did every morning, might still be true, was go to Amazon and have a look. Um, well, I got this note that said, hey, where's the letter? And uh, I wrote back and said, well, we're working on some problems. And being honest, I was trying to buy a little time. And I'm like, get in the shower, get in the shower, uh, or whatever he does in the morning. But that didn't work. And within two minutes, I had a reply that said, what problems? And at that point, the jig was up. So, uh, I wrote back and said, we're having all these technical problems. And um, Jeff immediately started to dig in. Well, the feedback I got from this over time is as I explained the problems, Jeff got more and more upset because the problem we had was preventable. And it was something that in an ideal world would have never happened. And if I had been more diligent, I and my team had been more diligent, we wouldn't have had it. Well, he got pretty hot because he felt that we had made a preventable rookie mistake. And so, of course, getting feedback, uh, Jeff wasn't yet the richest man in the world, but he was CEO of the company and getting feedback that not only didn't the product work, problem number one, but that I had made a preventable mistake that he thought was pretty, uh, you know, amateur to miss was problem number two. And I can say in a situation like that, I felt extremely bad. I felt worried, like, how is this going to affect my job? Um, you know, sometimes you get feedback and you don't have this idea, wow, I'm going down with the ship here. But in that case, I was pretty worried that it was really going to impact my career, might even cost me my job. And so I was working very hard to fix the problem, but the whole time I'm also trying to think about how am I going to handle this? Um, and to finish the story, uh, there were two levels of people between me and Jeff. Um, one of them heard that Jeff was upset with me and came to talk to my direct boss. My boss is a great boss. His name's Paul. He was trying to stay in front of me and say, it's my team. It's my problem. Don't blame Ethan. I own the team. He was doing a great job. And the other manager basically said, Paul, that is great leadership. You're taking the fall for your team. That's wonderful. But I know Ethan did it. Get out of the way. I want to talk to him. And so 
not only was Bezos mad at me, but another uh, gentleman was really taking me to task as well. Again, the problem I had is they weren't exactly wrong. They might have been pretty harsh, but they weren't wrong that I had missed something obvious. So look, the most painful feedback is the feedback you know is true. That feedback hurt because I'd missed something. And it hurt because I had disappointed important people and I was worried about how they were gonna think about it. So that was really awful. Uh, it did turn out all right. Um, good thing about Jeff is he gets upset quickly. He gets over it quickly. We fixed the problem. I had a meeting a week later and I went and sat next to him um, in the meeting. I could have skipped the meeting, but I thought, you know, if I can't sit next to him and I can't talk to him, uh, I better pack my desk. And so I went to the meeting and plopped down right next to where I thought he'd sit. We went through the whole rest of the meeting. And in my mind, during that whole meeting, he was uh, not talking to me. And I thought, oh boy, this is going to be rough. But that was probably in my mind because the meeting wasn't really about me. It was about other topics. So at the end of the meeting, he turns to me and he says, so how are you? How's your week been? I guess it's probably been a tough week. And the truth is, um, by the way, Dave, camera check. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, all right. Um, you want brick? Uh, I don't care. Am I in front of the lake? Yeah. Yeah, but put me back to bricks then. <laughs> Beautiful lake, though. I don't know where it's from, but it's a good background. All right. So uh, we're going to go back to bricks because we're playing with the technology. So uh, long story short, though, and I guess now it's long story long. Sorry, but that Jeff story is a good one. And most people are interested in it because they hear Jeff can be really tough. Um, he asked me how I was doing and I said, Hey, you know, everything's fixed now. I feel good, good about it. You know, we're working on making sure it never happens again. And what I liked about that is Jeff's, uh, uh, stuck with me. Um, you know, he didn't, he got over it and he was back on how to make things productive. And actually, as it turns out, I suffered much longer at the hands of others than I did at Jeff for that situation. So... Draco 16046, uh, who's my good friend Jim out of Boston, says, we ask people to select folks that someone has worked with on at least a semi-regular basis. Yeah, so that looks like it's an answer to Julie's question, which is great. Thank you, Jim. I think that's right. Jim's a director in his company. He's been managing uh, in Boston for 10 plus years. And I think he's adding something valuable there, which is you got to have the familiarity. So with that in mind, Stedman, thanks. Um, what's it like to give really hard, difficult feedback to high performers in high performance settings? Do you find they get defensive or do they say thank you? So Stedman, that's a wonderful prompt. We've been talking about performance reviews, but I believe anytime you're offered feedback, I would just recommend the best possible response to feedback is thank you. Even if you disagree with it, say thank you because you're getting valuable information. The thing to realize about all feedback is it's valid in this sense. If I say, hey Fred, I think you talk too much in meetings, maybe if you're Fred, you really do talk too much in meetings and you should think about that. Maybe you're pretty sure you don't and that doesn't match the feedback from others, but now you know I think that. And you can think about, well, maybe in meetings with Ethan, I should talk less, or maybe I should find a way to find out why he believes that. Did he hear it from someone else? So feedback is always a gift. It can be hard to take it that way. But the point is, if you say to me instead, Oh, Ethan, that's not true at all. That's completely wrong. My easiest thing is just not give you more feedback, right? I, like, I'm never required, even as your manager. The truth is, though I have a duty to give you feedback, I can always decide what to share and what not to share. And if you push back on people in a confrontational way, they'll stop giving you feedback it won't change their minds or what they believe. They'll just come to believe that you can't hear it. So I believe you should always say thank you. And then we can talk about 
what you can do if you don't think the feedback's accurate, but be receptive. So then I wanna go back from that and address Stedman's actual question. What's it like to give really hard or difficult feedback to high performers? High performers, there isn't any one answer here. I've certainly had high performers who they're very confident in their performance and they tend to reject feedback because they know they're high performers and they believe that because they're doing great work, they must be perfect or very close to perfect. I've also had high performers uh, give the belief that, uh, well, yes, I have that problem, but it really doesn't matter because I'm hitting my sales numbers or whatever it is they're achieving. And I think in that case, what I try to do is help them understand how it is impacting their performance or will hold them back from greater things. So I would turn this around a little bit since it's, uh, if you're a high performer, how do you get the most out of your feedback or out of performance reviews? Realize that everyone has areas of development and you can both be an amazing top performer and still have ways to grow. We can all think, I usually, I like sports analogies. All the top sports figures in every sport have coaches. But wait, I'm Tom Brady. I've just won my sixth Super Bowl. Why on earth do I need a quarterback coach? Why do I need a head coach? Why do I need anybody? Coaching and insight feedback is what still lets us know how to get better, how to keep improving, how to maintain peak performance. Um, so what's it like to give really hard feedback to high performers? I think the only way out of this trap for high performers, middle performers, low performers is concrete examples. So Stedman mentioned earlier, situation behavior impact. Managers, including myself, like to generalize because it's less confrontational. If I can say to you, hey, Fred, you talk too much in meetings and you go, yeah, I know that. I've now had a really soft conversation. And I don't have to have a hard one. And now I can just ask you what you're going to do about it. That's fantastic for me. But if Fred says, really, I didn't know that. Like, or I don't, I like, thank you for that input, but I'm not sure it's true. Now what? What do I do? What Fred should do is say, can you give me an example? I'd love to see it, you know, point me to a case where I did that or where it feels to you like I did that so I can understand. And basically always try, if you don't already agree with a piece of feedback, um, to get people to give you specifics. So that's what I would suggest. Um, and then do you find they get defensive or say thank you, finishing up Sedman's question, Honestly, uh, it's a little bit, uh, can be a little bit of anything. What I mean by that is some people get defensive. Some people go very quiet. They don't say anything. They just shut down. So they don't, you know, or they may mumble thank you, but it's clear that they've got up a wall. Um, defensive is actually better where they're engaging than where people just completely retreat. I have certainly had employees who clearly have decided, okay, I'm getting a bad performance review. I'm just going to nod and say, uh-huh, until you let me leave. We're not having a productive conversation at that point. So as a manager, what I do in that situation is I try to let people get some time and discuss it again later. This does remind me of a final thing I'll share. If you really are looking at a formal performance review, our best practices at Twitch and Amazon say we should share them in advance so that you can read them and digest them. I certainly think uh, that's a good practice. And if your manager doesn't do that, I highly encourage you to ask, if you know your performance review is coming, ask and say, can I get my performance review early? Now, managers can be nervous about this because they may think like you're gonna use that time to load up on all your reasons why the performance review is wrong. I don't advise this. You need to convince them that you're gonna handle it well and that you're using that time to prepare for a productive discussion. But even if you think it's wrong, I wouldn't go in with all guns blazing to disprove a performance review because 
if you seem extremely defensive, the easiest thing for a manager to do is not agree with you that their assessment is wrong, but instead just say, oh, Fred's not only a bad performer, he can't even hear it. And so you just are reinforcing that. Now, we can talk about at another point if you want to hear, it's certainly possible to debate a performance point. And I'm not saying you should just eat every negative thing said about you and agree with it if it's wrong. But there's ways to do that constructively and they really have to do with asking questions. Why do you feel that? Why do you believe that? Can you show me an example of that? I'd love to see a couple. Are there anybody else? Are there other peers that I could talk to to understand that? You go at it from let me understand, not you're wrong. Um, all right, lovely background, but the table looks a little bit out of place by the pier. Excellent point. We were gonna have the brick wall um, and we were just playing around with different backgrounds. A chair and a table on the pier, no bueno. I'm with you. All right. Um, have you found a way to get people to be less defensive when receiving constructive criticism? Sure. Um, number one, build trust in advance. Uh, the ability to hear constructive criticism begins with people feeling safe. Uh, there's this whole idea you can learn more about called psychological safety. But basically, when any of us feels unsafe, hormonally, we go into fight or flight, and fight or flight doesn't include listen and learn. Um, and so you immediately are in the wrong mental place, and you have to come out of that place somehow and uh, get them out of that place. And that really is about making things comfortable. It's the same thing about letting them pre-read if you can. And it's about having examples and reinforcing that you're sharing the examples so that you can address them together, not so you can punish them. Now we all know the raw truth is enough bad performance leads to people getting fired. Simple fact, can't get away from it. And so there's going to be pressure, particularly on negative performance situations. But in ones where you're just trying to correct something or give people a little bit of growth, uh, if you've built that trusting and investing relationship, then they can hear it. A great way to this question that was just asked is um, uh, if you ask them, could I give you some feedback? Um, that's more permission and opt-in. Next question here is how do you communicate to someone that they're in a role that's too big for them? Um, that's really tricky because hopefully it shouldn't be happening too soon. How do I communicate that we're in a role that's too big? Um, so why would you be communicating that? It's probably because they're struggling at it, right? If it's too big, they're not doing well. You've got to back them out of the role and they may know that. So they're going to feel threatened like, oh, you're telling me this role is too big for me. That's another way of saying I'm not doing very well. You have to turn it into, uh, I believe you can turn it into a positive in quotes here, less negative, whatever you want to call it. Hey, you're struggling in this role. Here's what I see. Here's the places you can ask them, by the way, how they think they're doing, because if you can get people to self-acknowledge that they're struggling, then they may welcome help. Here's how I'd like to help you with that. But the biggest thing for a role that's too big for people is they want to know that if they step back, it's not forever. At least that's how I feel about it and what I've seen, which is can I step back and then come back out of it? So that's how I would go about communicating that a role is too big. I'd have my examples or facts, ideally based on metrics, and then I'd show them a path forward that it's not forever. Next question, what approaches can one take to act on challenging feedback one has received? I like that because it's one, it's not you, it's one. What, uh, so the first thing there is truly understand it. Um, People ask all kinds of feedback, uh, give all kinds of feedback. 
it's a fraught situation, the first thing I would try to do to act on challenging feedback is get a better picture of it. The second thing I would do is try and get that picture not only from whoever gave it to me, but from other people. So when I recently got the review I talked about that said, hey, I interrupt people, which I kind of already knew, but it was being called out to me that that was very unpleasant for them and they really didn't like it. I went and asked some people I trusted, my wife, one of my advisors, David Valencia, who may be here tonight, I haven't seen him drop into chat, um, or I don't recognize what name he picked. But um, I went and asked him and said, you know me extremely well. How do I do this? Like, in what way am I interrupting people? And uh, my wife thought about it for a little while, and she listened to me on a phone call with someone. And she pointed out, she said, you said to him a couple times, let me stop you right there. She said, that's a really bad idea. Like, let the person finish. And I was trying to save time. I, I was lots of things that are excuses. The point is, someone who knew me well, who I trusted to help me, was able to show me what I was doing. And because it wasn't my boss, I wasn't like, oh, I have to quickly explain away why that was an accident or I'm not really that person. It was just like, okay, I see that it's true. Now what? How, how am I going to change that? So I don't think I've said, let me stop you right there since that day, but I probably have. That's one thing, by the way, challenging feedback, you're not going to fix it really quickly. One of the things I share with everyone who's a top performer, if you've worked on your career for a long time, all your easy problems are gone. If it was easy for you to fix and you believed you should fix it, you already would have. So the things that are left in your career now that you've been in it three years, five years, 20 years are the things you're going to struggle with the rest of your life. I got the feedback about interrupting people. I'll probably be struggling with interrupting people till the day I die. So I, I try to get better at it. But the thing to realize is you get that clear picture. And then you have to try and figure out how are you going to change a habit? There's a great book just came out by a guy named Martin Lanik, L-A-N-E-K, I believe, called The Power of Habit. And it's about people don't change behavior because they lack the knowledge that they interrupt people, as an example. They need a way to form a new habit to stop interrupting. So I highly recommend that book because it breaks performance down into 70 habits you can go and learn. And actually, in coming weeks, we'll have a book list on the Twitch channel as well as on the Easy Coach website so that books I refer to are all listed and people can go get them. So Kuraluta says, what type of feedback works best when dealing with someone with uneven performance? Frequent. Frequent feedback we talked about earlier. So when they're doing good or they do good things, positive reinforcement of the positive and when they do something that's uneven or, or poor right when they have when you have a clear example in the moment feedback is the most powerful i've heard you know dogs forget like you can't punish a dog for chewing on your shoes or whatever more if you don't catch them doing it because they have no idea how to connect it back to that event if it's more than a few minutes later or even a few seconds well Humans aren't that much better at it, actually. And if you're trying to tell me about something I did three weeks ago or three months ago, it's not nearly as powerful as if you tell me right there. And so ideally, when you see that uneven performance, you're pulling people aside. Um, <clears throat> so you're pulling them aside right when the event happens and working with them right there in order to try to help them see and try to help them make fixes. There's science I don't totally remember or uh, understand, but basically you need a lot of iterations. I think it's up to 50 to build a new habit. And so the more you can help people to see something um, and tighten that loop between behavior and and new behavior, the faster they can learn.
And so um, I'll actually tie this to the question above it. What approaches can you take to act on feedback? You can ask someone to call you on stuff. So for this person with uneven performance, what I would say is, would you mind, I see that you often are um, leaving a messy workplace and we can't have that in our work environment. Would you mind if when I see that, I just let you know, we won't make a big deal out of it, but I, that way like you can know when it's a problem. To the point of challenging feedback, if I only get feedback once a year on interrupting people, I'll never change. But if I have a couple trusted friends who call me aside after a meeting and say, hey, you, you talked over Martha, you talked over Alex, um, and they do it consistently, I'll get better at it much more quickly. So that's another way to work on challenging feedback is get someone to help you once you have a plan. So Stedman asks, uh, we're using Twitch technology for this conversation. What if Twitch entrepreneurs tuned in and leverage what they are learning? By the way, the reason I read the questions out loud is we are going to turn the audio of this into a podcast and those people won't have the advantage of the chat. So what if Twitch entrepreneurs turned in and leveraged what we are learning? That's my ultimate dream and goal is I would love to see this spread not only to the professional community of people working in places like I do at Amazon or wherever each of you works, high tech or otherwise, I'd also like to see it spread across Twitch. Twitch is full of entrepreneurs who may have never had formal managers uh, or they may be working on Twitch part time. But in general, I think there's a large hungry community that would like to do better in their careers and that have questions I can maybe give answers to because I've managed thousands of people over my time. Um, and of course, the collective audience here, I know there's a bunch of leaders in it, particularly as the audience grows and as we take the stream public, I hope the stream will have people who've managed tens of thousands of people in every industry. Um, so could this platform be a unique value add? That is my dream and vision for this approach, which is if I don't know the answer or I haven't worked in your industry, someone in the audience will have done that and can offer a perspective I can't. And then it can ripple out across Twitch where different Twitch streamers can be better at running their businesses, be better at building their audiences and all of their listeners that happen to listen to this or get value from others can be better in their careers. So, um, <clears throat> um, Pink Dragon says, uh, I found that when I have formed a trusting relationship with my peers and direct reports, they respond much better to challenging feedback, including them, including telling them their role may not be the right fit. See, I happen to know the story, at least one story shared by Pink Dragons there, which is, uh, there was a case where she did, in fact, remove someone from a role that was too big and they've stayed with the company very happy in the other role. By the way, most people don't mind being removed from a role that's too big. There are some that want that role for ego reasons, but most people want it for money reasons. Generally, bigger roles, usually bigger pay. Um, Removing someone from a role like that or getting them to see it's too big, you probably need to show them a path towards where they can get that pay another way over time. But you may just need to show them, unfortunately, the path that since the role is too big, they're not going to be successful. And so better the pay in the smaller role because you're going to be successful. That's what makes performance improvement tricky is it is tied to how we're paid. And that's what loads so much concern about actual performance reviews as compared to feedback is they're tied to how we're paid and that's tied to how we live and to so many of our dreams. So that's why I thought this was a good topic that's so sensitive because one of the things I hope to have on this stream over time is a lot of straight talk. And no doubt the crinkly bottle will have to go. <clears throat> That's my fault. All right. 
Plus David says, great feedback on the sound. Thanks, sound comes through better when you stand. Okay, didn't know that. <coughs> Sitting, I sound a bit muffled. Well, that's super helpful. I'll know that. We have microphones actually all over here. We'll have to keep tuning and work on. <coughs> and yeah, apparently no, not a bonus. All right, so I've worked my way down through all the questions. I appreciate everything you guys have asked. We're almost at the end here where I've done a full hour, which is plenty of testing. So I don't really need to do more testing tonight. I am gonna do this again in a week with a bigger audience. We'll work on everything you guys have told us. Uh, we're gonna work on the table, the background. Sound has proven to be a real challenge. Uh, where you can help us is all of you either know me or whomever invited you, it be it uh, my wife, Audrey, my producer, Dave. Um, we would love to have your feedback on what's going right or wrong and how we can improve. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one more dress rehearsal next weekend. I hope you all come back for that. That would mean a lot to me. Then I'm gonna be on a little bit of a trip and out of the country for a couple weeks. And after that trip, we're gonna go broad live, hopefully to a larger audience. I do have some good friends um, <clears throat> who have uh, volunteered to sort of help publicize things, so I think that'll work. Stedman asks a great question with eight minutes left, says, what do you hope to see happen as a result? So I shared part of that, but I think also um, that's the bigger vision of taking the stream to more people and, and in early Mar mid March, taking it out to a large audience and trying to make this a weekly event where a lot of people can learn from each other and where I can share um, and where hopefully I'm helping people. So one thing, since you're all my friends, you can be really honest with me. Um, I'm curious if even though you didn't actually come to hear this topic, you came because I asked you to help me test, tell me what you thought of the content. Tell me if you learned anything new. Did it work for you? I know when I speak internally to Twitch and Amazon and to other audiences, a lot of people do learn things and get a lot from it. Uh, if you didn't tonight, I need to hear that. I need to hear, well, hey, you know, maybe it works for people who are actually interested, but you didn't have much to add for me. On the other hand, if I did, that's a really great signal because if I gave you something that you weren't coming for, that shows that we're really on the right track. Now, and I have at least one person who's come back, our number one cheerer, by the way. Thank you, High Fist. Um, we're 10 cents in there, which will all go, by the way, to charity. I'm on the board of the Washington Trails Association, and anything that's cheered here uh, or uh, that comes in through this channel in any way, I'm gonna be passing on to the Washington Trails Association. I'm not in this for any direct income. Um, <clears throat> uh, but, um, I'm glad you learned something. So, uh, <clears throat> what do I hope comes out of this though, from what we all learn? Frankly, I hope you have an easier time with the next time you need to have a performance review. You have the opportunity, by the way, I make it sound bad. I hope next time you prep for your performance review, you get the right set of peers you tell your boss, I'm really looking forward to this and I hope you can put some time into it because I want to improve. You get a chance, you ask him if you can pre-read it, you think through it, you try and get examples in situation behavior impact or some other formats, so you have clear examples, and then you build habits using Martin Lanik or some other tool to actually improve. Because that's the actual goal, is we all can be better and stronger and the world needs good leaders. And I'm hoping that together we can become better leaders. So, <laughs> said, ha, next year. I wonder who that is, but yeah, next year, get on it. Um, I live by this, I give these talks to my own team, and so then they come and say, remember when you said that you would do this, this, and this in my performance review? Um, and when I'm public on Twitch, I'm sure some of my own team will end up listening and asking me questions. So as Deadman says, and I'll take this as our closing, I love the stories, hearing your experience at Amazon and the great application for Twitch and beyond is exciting. Thank you, Stedman. And uh, I love to share the Amazon stories when I can. 
Certainly that was my one of my most dramatic encounters with Jeff and the leadership chain, the story I shared about Jeff being upset. It was definitely bad to be getting uh, hot emails from him that one morning years ago, but it definitely improved me. I learned how to be more on top of things operationally because I never wanted to make a mistake like that again and knock on the table that doesn't belong in front of the pier but doesn't belong in front of the brick wall, knock on that, I haven't had that same problem since. All right, uh, you once said all my D&D &D characters were always in elf and plate mail. Yes, okay, that makes perfect sense. All right, um, that is so true. So I think I know who that is, but it's been a long time. All right. So d and is awesome. Thank you all. I won't sit down because apparently that muffles my sound, but we're going to cut it off now and I hope you can come back in a week. I'd welcome your feedback and email on what we can do better and I uh, look forward to seeing you again. And with that, bye-boom. Thank you.